Welcome back to SSMR Online. We are raising money for Alzheimer Fondin. Links to donate can be found below the stream. We would also like to thank Kaspersky, Twitch, and ViewSonic for sponsoring this event. Now it's time for Frozen Flygon and co-commentator Bean Jammin to take it away with Powerpuff Girls, Him and Seek, Any Percent. Good luck, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm really excited that this run was able to be rescheduled after our little internet snag we had the other day. Uh, so thank you so much to the whole ESA team. Uh, I'm super excited to show this off. Uh, let's get on into the run. So time will start in three, two, one, and go. So the basis of this game is that our teacher, Miss Keen, has asked us to complete a scavenger hunt. That sounds very harmless, but the bad guy, him, has shuffled all of our items, and now we have to go all over Townsville fighting crime and defeating all of the bad guys. Uh, so we have the individual levels of each of the girls, and I'll let Bean explain uh, how we're starting with Bubbles. Yeah, hi, my name is Bean Jammin. Uh, I also run this game. Uh, so the beginning of this game starts out where you play as just one of the three Powerpuff Girls. Uh, right now we are playing as Bubbles, collecting all of the animals that have escaped from the zoo. Uh, some general things that you can see about the game is this yellow MP bar, mana bar, whatever you'd like to call it, controls uh, almost all of the uh, interesting mechanics in the game. Uh, it slowly depletes while you dash, so you can see Flygon. Uh, using her dash as much as possible right now because we can't use it when carrying the animals. That would just be way too much to ask of one single Powerpuff Girl. Uh, you will see later in combat, uh, if you use your laser eyes, that takes about a quarter of the bar, or a special move. Uh, each girl has two special moves. Uh, will take about half of the bar. And then later in the run, we will see a super special move that requires all three Powerpuff Girls that uses your full MP bar. So that's really our biggest management there. Um, everything else is really trying to route, route out what is the most convenient way to get from point A to point B um, without getting hit too much. As you can see, the hit animation really just eats up all of your frames and takes control away from you for uh, an unreasonable amount of time. Um, and uh, just keep moving along, trying to save Townsville as effectively as possible. Yeah, when you are carrying an animal and you get hit, you also drop the animal, so you have to pick them back up. And when you're carrying the animals, you also can't punch any of the bad guys. Uh, the interesting thing about the enemy hitboxes is that if you fly below them, they really can't hit you. So I try and st stick to the bottom of the screen as much as possible, because um, it's much safer than trying to go fly above them, because some of them can throw rocks above you, um, things like that. So typically, uh, staying towards the bottom of the screen is good for avoiding the enemies. You also can dash through them, um, and you will always have priority, so if you have the ability to use magic, dashing through enemies is also very safe. And this is the last little meerkat here. You, have to, you always have to wait for it to say you rounded up the animals, otherwise sometimes it won't say that, and you'll leave and the animals will be uh, scattered again. So you always want to make sure you see that text box. And now we're going to our first boss, with it, which is Fuzzy, who was the one who released all the animals. So see our first little bit of combat here. Uh, that's Sonic Scream, which is one of her special moves. Each of the girls has two special moves. Uh, they do kind of different things. Uh, they're very powerful. They just require half of your magic bar, so you have to have a good, good eye on how much magic you have at all times. So you see Flygon picked up at the end of the fuzzy boss battle, his banjo that is on our scavenger hunt list. Don't worry about why. I'm sure it's nothing dubious. Uh, now we are here. The gangrene gang has stolen all of the toys from the kindergartners because uh, they are just the meanest bullies. Uh, so we got to punch them real bad and get all the, uh, the stuffed animals back from them. So you can see a health pickup um, at the end of this bar, and you'll also see a magic pickup, which are uh, three yellow sort of glitter sparkles. Um, right up here in the cloud. And these are going to be our most convenient pickups in the game because it gets our dash back, which means we can conti continue to uh, go faster throughout the level. Yep, and there's also a boss at the end of this, so I'm not dashing here to be able to save my magic to be able to use special attacks against Princess, our favorite Powerpuff Girls impersonator. She can be kind of mean if she decides to dash across the screen early, uh, but that wasn't too bad of a fight. That was really nice. 
We're coming into the final uh, individual girl level before we get to play as all three with Buttercup, who is the slowest of the three uh, Powerpuff Girls. Uh, Bubbles is the fastest, so we're going to try and use her as much as possible once we have the option to. Uh, but we are going to utilize a Death Warp here, so you'll be seeing Flygon take intentional damage throughout this level. Um, because she needs to collect 10 of these gems, uh, which are being held by the bad guys. They're being held by the same bad guys every single run. Absolutely no RNG in this game. Um, and also collect the poodle that the mayor forgot in the museum? Hotel? We're in a museum. Uh, yeah. Museum. <laughs> um, but, because again... Buttercup is very slow, uh, and we want to go fast. So the way that death works in this game is that you will reload from the screen that you entered from. This screen is not a circle, so if we exited to our closest exit, we would have to take about 40 seconds to take a further away elevator and go all the way back. But instead, we uh, respawned at the closest elevator to the entrance and took that elevator back down to the first floor and we're back here saving us nearly a minute in this 20 minute run yeah and it also gives us our dash back when you when you die you just reload and get your dash back uh so it's very very useful in terms of saving time uh because buttercup's really slow uh so you see i we now have all three girls which uh can be really fun they they each have their own individual health their individual magic um, and so we want to be Bubbles as long as possible because she's really fast. So this run also becomes a management of Bubbles' health. Uh, anytime I'll switch away from Bubbles, it's just because I do not want her to get hurt because I need her for the rest of the run. So here we are saving Tokyo Townsville from all of these monsters. Uh, it's a very uh, simple looking sort of circular path because there's going to be monsters on the street and a few monsters that are flying up above in... Uh, the skyline here. Uh, again, there's no RNG in this game, so the placement of the monsters is mostly based off of how fast you go through it, because they'll move back and forth in somewhat of a cyclical, cyclical pattern. Um, but it's, it's very easy to estimate where monsters are going to be and be able to go and punch them and scream at them. Yeah, and the good thing is a lot of these enemies have magic pickups, so you can kind of kill an enemy and get your magic back, dash to the next one as much as possible. We defeated all the monsters, except for one, my least favorite boss in the game, I'll have yep. to say, <laughs> uh, where we are only allowed to punch his eyes, and we have to be inside of his spike hitbox in order to reach them. Uh, it's a bit <laughs> annoying. Uh, Flygon's doing very good right now with some magic management here. Uh, okay, can I get him good. down without using any of the girls? Very impressive. Um, and now we're going back out. It's going to ma be magically nighttime. And we need to break into the club. And how do we do that? By punching all of the monsters again and getting a secret password. Yeah, this is pretty similar to the previous section, except there are two screens. Um, and, I mean, that's really all there is to it. There's just more enemies. Uh, you always got to make sure you get the ones that are in the air. I come back down and get this one um, because we, want, we end at the arcade. So I want to just go in a circular fashion, come back to the arcade and not have to backtrack. The enemies in the air are actually the easiest, which is really nice. Um, so you can pretty much just dash through them, punch them once, uh, and they're pretty much gone. The hardest enemies that you see are like the really buff reptile guys and the purple ones. They're kind of, they can be intimidating. Alright, I didn't need that health. I uh, the great thing is, if you're using an uh, attack that will hit multiple enemies, it will damage them both for, for full damage. So anytime the enemies are overlapping, that's great for us. Save some time. Uh, lasers also will go through enemies and uh, continue to go across the screen and do damage, which is awesome. Um, so the the combat in this game I really enjoy. Same with the movement. Yeah, there's some very convenient things that you can do with the laser eyes because all of the girls, except for Buttercup, uh, move as fast or faster than the laser eyes. So you can just follow that across the screen. But here we go into my favorite part of the game now. <laughs> Uh, move over, beat Mania, and Dance Dance Revolution. Here comes the boogeyman fight in Powerpuff Girls, Him and Seek. Uh, <laughs> don't change the dials on your television. Your video is not desynced from the audio. This is just how the game is. Uh, it is fantastic. It's my favorite part of this game. <laughs> There are three rounds of this, and it's not thrilling gameplay, so host, if you have anything to read right now, please, please do so. 
Okay, I do have something for you. While it's not a donation, I would like to remind you guys, while the Powerpuff Girls are fighting crime and trying to save the world, we can help a different fight, the fight against Alzheimer's and dementia, by helping fundraise research for preventive measures and cures. Every donation helps, guys. Awesome, thanks so much. What puzzles me the most about this fight is that the boogeyman is like, I'm gonna challenge you to a dance contest, and then he's just standing there like... <laughs> it's, it's obvious we're going to win! We've got some awesome moves here! Uh, I don't- I don't get it. Yeah, the Powerpuff Girls has this very intricate, coordinated <laughs> dance movement. Uh, and Boogeyman is just swaying his hips. How do they do it? <laughs> the only tech in this part of the run is that you want to try and miss the last beat uh, so you collect the combo points early that, and you just mash in between the sections. That's really the only thing you can do here. <laughs> uh, and the, the win conditions for this are also fairly easy. Um, you just have to get a majority of great and perfects to be able to move on. You don't need to get the high score or anything. I don't even know if I typically get the high score. I feel like I probably do. Um, but I, I don't even think they could have tried harder to not match to not match the music with the inputs. I <laughs> just you, just call your composer and have them write this. I I have a lot of questions about this section. <laughs> but this is My the third and final round. Thank goodness. <laughs> And don't worry, this is one of the two fun, fabulous minigames you'll see in this run. The second one's much better. The second one is a lot better, but I do like like this one more. <laughs> and I think I'm allowed to have that opinion. <laughs> Alright, well now it's daytime again. Powerpuff Girls have stayed up past their bedtime, and now we are going to have to go save uh, some cops who got tied up in the jail. Yes, Mojo Jojo has br broken out the prisoners and escaped from the jail, so we have to, uh, you know, help the police officers get out of here. Um, the rooms where the officers are, are set, I have them just on my splits, telling me exactly where to go. Um, and the hardest part about this section is ensuring you go the right way when you enter and exit rooms. <laughs> uh, otherwise, this section's pretty easy. You see me just stick sticking to the floor, and then I won't get hit, and you can you can just dash to get the rubs off of the officers. So it's a fairly it's a fairly easy section. Not too tricky. Yep. My favorite part about this is that there is a like like you can press B once you go up to untie the ropes or when you dash you can just kind of punch the ropes right off of them. It is uh it's one much faster and two just much more fun to watch. It's very silly. <laughs> we don't we don't ask how it works, but all right, last one. This part always now has we'll some tragic lag. lag. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So while all the guards were tied up, one person did escape. It was Mojo Jojo. And we will help him escape in this Frogger minigame. Yeah, his dialogue there was basically, I have taken over the game and now you must help me escape. I, Mojo Jojo, will never be taken again. And so uh, we get to do the Mojo Jojo Frogger minigame, which is actually really enjoyable and fun. <laughs> there's, a, there's an arcade challenge mode as well. You can do like a high score contest. I did that on stream the other day. Um, and it's very difficult. The puzzles get much harder. You only have to do three screens uh, in the story mode of the game, um, but the arcade mode is really fun. I really, I really enjoy it. And uh, again, I have a set path through here. I take the exact same way every time just because I'm comfy with it. The water sections can be very difficult if you don't know where you're going because the submarines will go underwater. All right, that was good. That is an incredible Mojo Jojo. Uh, that is certainly the most difficult part of the run for me personally. Um, and to be able to get it, get through there uh, first try every time is really great. So Mojo Jojo has gone back to his lair. Uh, so we will go follow him and uh, disobey the rules of his lair. We will utilize some out of bounds. Uh, this usually requires you to collect 
uh, five colored key cards, but uh, the whole Mojo Jojo's layer is only three load screens. And we found that if you can clip into almost every corner of of Mojo Jojo's layer, layer here. There we go. Um, and totally skip most of the rooms <laughs> required uh, to be able to pick up all the correct key cards. Yeah, we uh, refer so to this now as through. <laughs> we refer to this now as the OOB Observatory, the, the Out of Bounds Observatory. Uh, it's a really fun section. This just used to be a terrible, awful maze, uh, and it has been made much better by these clips. I really enjoy it. I switched to Buttercup here because uh, that robot can be really mean if you miss the clips, and again, we're always trying to save uh, bubbles as much as possible in this. This section was actually the first clip we found, and now it's become my most inconsistent section, <laughs> but uh, it's all good. And that purple door is the boss door, so we're almost there. Uh, this section used to take a good, like, two minutes, and now it is uh, about, you know, a minute faster. Uh, it's- the clips are also just really fun to do. It was- it was really exciting discovering these. These were only discovered, like, a, a month ago. So it's really cool to be able to show them off. And now I'm going to swap to, uh, Buttercup and Blossom, uh, because, again, I want to save Bubbles' health as much as possible for the boss fight. We also, correct me if I'm wrong, you have Blossom as your girl with full MP for yes. the second phase of this boss battle. So, uh, Mojo Jojo is here in his mech suit, uh, and we have to do what you do at every mech suit. Punch the arms and then punch the head until it breaks. Uh, we will then utilize a very overpowered move uh, in the second phase of the fight. Uh, the super powered uh, laser right there knocks him out in one hit. We'll utilize that twice. Uh, it is incredibly overpowered. Yeah, it's really fast. Really fast. Uh, we only routed that in recently because we had always just been using the special moves, and it's like, what if we save all our magic? So always try and have a girl on backup have all of her magic, and it's extremely efficient for the final phase of both Mojo Jojo and the Him fight, which is coming up. And now that you've defeated, once you've done all the story quests. Um, Him's portal opens up in the middle of Townsville, which is actually very hard to find. Uh, it's not very obvious, and they don't tell you where it is. Uh, but uh, we'll get into the warp zone, and then we have a three-section auto-scroller. Um, this section can actually be really difficult because there are fireballs coming at you, and you can get stuck in the walls. If you get stuck in the wall, your lead girl automatically dies, um, which is really unfortunate. Uh, which almost happened to me there. I was really nervous about that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is a good time for the host to read, uh, anything that needs to be said. Okay, um, bear with me guys on this one. We have a $5 donation from Hacha Chacha, and it says, My name is Hacha Chacha, and here is my meal. A diabolical plan with lots of appeal. <laughs> Thank you, Hacha Chacha, for that donation. I really appreciate it. Um, I also want to <laughs> take a moment to let everyone know that we do have an upcoming run called River City Ransom, where you get to choose the file name. Um, we have two file incentives right now, one for Bruce and one for Cecile. Uh, $80 for Bruce and $75 for Cecile. So if you guys want to see Cecile win, please put your bids towards that. And I have actually one more donation for you guys before Absolutely. I head back. Um, we have $11 from Carl Germ saying, Great cause, great runs, great event, great donation reader. Putting this towards the blindfolded ring fit adventure run because that sounds amazing. Thank you, Carl Germ. That does sound amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this section is can be kind of scary, um, especially because I, I know that both Buttercup and Blossom only have one hit left, um, so that's kind of unfortunate. So here there is a health pickup, which is great. Um, I want to get all of their magic to full, um, but I do not want to risk them taking any damage, so I now know Buttercup's at full. I'm going to try and get Blossom to full, but also, you know, maintaining her health. Um, there are some more health pickups in the third screen, luckily, um, so I'm not too worried. Um, but it still can be a little a little sketch. All right. So now switching to make sure all the girls get max health. And uh, there's a rubber ducky here. You don't need it for the run, but I always like to collect it for good luck. It makes me happy. <laughs> This third screen is the most confusing of all of them, I would say. Um, took me a while to kind of get comfortable with the route. Because um, the first screen, you just go down the whole time. Second screen, you go up the whole time. And this one is a much more weedy 
uh, much more weedy section. Um, but once you see the spikes, you know you're home free. So you really just follow the spikes till the end. Uh, and as long as you don't get clipped by that wall, you're fairly safe. Yeah, this is certainly one of the more challenging sections to figure out casually. Uh, there's a lot of intentional dead ends that will restart your room. Um, but uh, once you, you figure out how tight all of the turns can be uh, learning the speed run, it, it at least uh, becomes understandable. It may not be consistent or simple. Yeah. But you can understand it at least. All right, here's the him fight. Uh, him has this uh, great feature where if you come all the way down to the bottom of the screen and shoot lasers as he spawns, he can't even get out uh, a laser from his mouth. <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> and then another great feature of being able to also get one shot by the uh, massive laser in his face too. Yeah, and so the him fight belt. is very trivial. <laughs> we got him's belt. And we're going to go show it off to our uh, kindergarten teacher, Miss Keen. Uh, time will be uh, at the end of the cutscene when you see all of the Powerpuff Girl flashing hearts. And time. Wow. So I don't know what time it says on the screen, but I was taking my own splits. And that is, I have a 2028, and that is not only a world record. That is the first sub-21 we've ever seen in this game. So that's really exciting! That's incredible. <laughs> Great job. The clips went really well. All the fights went well. None of the girls died. That was a great run. That was awesome. That was a very clean run. That was very, very good. Congrats on that world record. We have <laughs> one donation for you. Awesome. We have $10 from Danstad that says, Danstad is glad to see Powerpuff Girls getting its fair share in the spotlight. Keep it up, Frozen. Keep on grooving all and stay safe. Congrats again. Thanks so much, Danstad. Uh, thank you to ESA for uh, accepting this run. Uh, this has never been shown off at a marathon before. It's a very small community. We currently have four runners. But it's a really fun game. Uh, if you want to learn this run, get in contact with me. Um, it's it's a really fun speed game. It's silly, but I, the Powerpuff Girls are really near and dear to my heart, and I hope you enjoyed the run so much. Thank you, Bean, for being here and commentating for me as well. Thank you.